Oh, Augustana, welcome to our weekly text study. Uh, our lesson for Sunday is Luke 15. It's actually the whole chapter. And um, I'm not going to read it because it is lengthy, um, but it's uh, the parables, three of them, uh, about being lost and found. Uh, the lost sheep, uh, the lost coin, and what I would say is the lost son, even though most of us know this parable as the parable of the prodigal son. But you could also um, say it's the parable of the lost older brother. And uh, there is a body of literature that refers to this parable actually as the parable of the waiting father. So there's lots of different ways that uh, these parables have been looked at and studied and reflected on. Uh, it's a powerful chapter of scripture, Luke 15. It's really unique in that um, there's not another chapter in the, New, in the New Testament, particularly in the four gospels, that's quite like this, I think, in terms of uh, these three parables that are kind of stacked on each other. There's a progression to the way the parables work and what they communicate to us. And just a couple of things that are important to highlight, I think, as we read and as we reflect on this chapter, uh, is the first two verses that really sets the table. It's important to look at context whenever we read scripture. And, um, and the chapter begins, uh, now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. That would be Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. And so right at the beginning of the chapter, you have this tension, um, this conflict that uh, we, we hear in other parts of the, the Gospels of the, the, the people that Jesus hangs out with, the people that actually want to come and hear him, the tax collectors and the sinners, the outcasts, not part of the religious in crowd, uh, they're the ones that are looking for Jesus and seeking him out. And the Pharisees and the scribes who are, um, the ones who follow the law obediently and dil diligently, they're upright, uh, they're righteous, they're faithful, uh, they're everything that you would say a good believer would be, uh, they're the ones who grumble. And they can't understand why Jesus wants to welcome sinners and eat with them. And, uh, and after they, they, they say this, that's when he tells the three parables. Uh, the first parable about a lost sheep, uh, the second parable, parable about the lost coin, and then the third and final one, the longest of the three, uh, about the lost son, the prodigal son. A uh, couple of things that stick out for me uh, in all three parables is um, the conclusion of the first two, just so I tell you there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Uh, the joy, the celebratory nature of God when that which is lost is found in God's eyes. The other thing I think that's important to think about, and this is what's been on my mind a lot, is that to be lost is the same as being dead. And the younger son is dead. Uh, when he leaves home, uh, he goes off on his own, he squanders his inheritance, everything that the family the father has given to him, and, uh, um, and he's left all alone. Uh, He's lost, and in fact, he's essentially dead. And in verse 17, it says, when he, had come to, when he, when he came to himself, uh, it's like it finally dawns on him that his condition is hopeless, that he is in fact lost, that he is cut off, and that he is in fact dead. And it's at that moment that he begins to turn he turns back home. Now he's working in his own mind the method in which he thinks he needs to return home. And that is, he says, uh, I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, and, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he thinks about going home, but he puts conditions on it. Uh, that he can't go home again as a son, but he can go home maybe as a hired hand. Uh, but what's interesting, when he starts going home, when he's far off, the father sees him. Before the son even sees the father, the father sees this dead son of his, this lost son. And filled with compassion, he runs out to him, 
puts his arms puts his arms around him, kisses him, and the son starts to give his speech, but the father hears nothing of it and says, Bring out a robe, the best one, put it on him, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, get the fatted calf, kill it, let us eat and celebrate. In verse 24, for the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was found, he was lost and is found. These are parables about being lost and being found, about being dead and being brought back to life again. All because of the grace of God, that this Jesus fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. And the younger son really epitomizes this condition of being cut off from home, of being lost, of being dead, and the power of God's grace, the reach of God's love, and the how far God is willing to go to welcome us home. We have to take a look at the older brother as well. Um, I believe he is lost. Um, he's lost in his own anger, his pride, his disappointment that this brother of his, or as he says to his father, this son of yours uh, is welcomed home to a party of all things um, and uh, it drives the older brother crazy and he's not willing to participate in it and in a sense he's just as dead as the younger son. Um, he's not willing to recognize the scope of the father's love. Um, he's not willing to embrace it uh, even for himself and uh, uh, there's a sadness for me in that. So I would invite you just to read through this parable. Where do you see yourself in this parable? And what part of your life is lost? What needs to be found? Or what part of your life is dead? And how can God bring it back to life? Well, the simple answer is, in the parables, just go home. The Father's waiting to welcome you back, to welcome you home, to kill the fatted calf, to kill the fatted calf, and to celebrate. For the Son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. At the end of each one of the parables, that's what it is, a party, a celebration. Because God rejoices whenever anything's lost and is found. And boy, that's good news. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of the scope, the depth, the width, the height of God's love for us. And that's what makes these parables so powerful. So I commend them to you. And... Uh, uh, listen carefully uh, and listen to what it is that this word will speak to you. Thanks.